flows on straight on from last week when we were listening to, or hearing about Lydia. And, but this time I'm going to read from the new Revised Standard Version because it has a certain word that I want to refer to later. So Acts 16, 16. These uh, missionaries have been, including Paul, of course, who have uh, responded to a call to spread the word of God, been to Macedonia. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. May God bless to us this reading from his word. Thanks be to God. Isn't it a dramatic story? Yeah. Well, today is the Sunday after Ascension Day. Remember that Jesus is not only risen, but that he's no longer physically with us on earth. He has gone up to be with the Father. If he were with us still on earth, everyone would be looking towards wherever he put his administration. Maybe where Jerusalem is now, or maybe in a surprise place. But he hasn't set up HQ in Jerusalem, or Canberra, or anywhere else on earth. That means everyone, everyone in the world, can look up with eyes of faith 
and believe that Jesus is for them. But how will people get to encounter Jesus? They need ordinary Christians for that. Today's reading from Acts takes us way into the book after the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So that's the other important thing, of course, about God for Christians. The power to stay connected with Jesus gone from earth is through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Anne Lucent will hear more about Pentecost later. The power to stay connected. Power has been a big theme in Australia this last week or two, hasn't it? We have a new government, so there has been a focus on the power plays involved in elections. But there are policy questions about power too, about electrical power. Where should it come from? How much will it cost? The new policy will mean we do more to capture the power of the sun and the wind. And there will be spending to share power around the country so everyone can benefit. The cost with staying with things in the earth, coal and gas, is rising. The cost of sourcing things from above, sun and wind, is falling. Paul and Silas had amazing power from above. They were able to deal with people the same way Jesus did. The young slave girl said that they were slaves of the Most High God. That Paul and Silas were slaves of God who would show others the way to be saved. Hmm. So, notice the NRSV uses the word slaves, not servants. Paul and Silas were totally committed to their job of reaching people. The spirit in a slave girl was saying true words. But Paul didn't need this kind of advertising. Maybe she was using up his airspace to say what he needed to say. Anyway, she was being exploited. Her owners were making money from her ability to tell fortunes. Paul exercised the spirit. It left the girl. That's when the dark powers worked against the evangelists. They ended up being stripped, flogged and thrown into prison, into leg chains, in the most secure inner room. Now they were very obvious captives. Captives under the Roman system. Their minder, the warder, had a high duty of honour to keep them captive. If a prison guard failed this duty, his life would be worth nothing. He would kill himself. Paul and Silas didn't use this time to think about escape or about what they'd do after their sentence was up. They used the moment. They related to the people around them right then and there. They gained their power from above. They sang hymns to God and prayed. And we know that the other prisoners were listening. They shared their faith even as captives of the system. Then the earthquake came. What greater example could there be of God's power? God Almighty had shown power in the way we recall from the Old Testament, like how we were staying this morning from uh, this afternoon from Psalm 97. His lightning lights up the world, the earth sees and trembles. Yes, it was a violent earthquake. It not only broke the walls, but also the chains of the prisoners. It's hard to imagine a more Dramatic demonstration of power. My chains fell off. It's the line of a famous hymn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what happened next? Did Paul and Silas use this amazing God-given chance to escape? Amazingly, no. Their heart 
was not on power for their own use, but on what they could do for others as slaves of Christ. They hung around and helped their jailer understand what it is like to follow Jesus. Paul and Silas weren't distracted by the forces of power around them. Their attention was always on their message. God's power may sometimes work in our favour, and sometimes it may seem that the dark forces have the upper hand. But it's all the same for the Christian. We're slaves of Christ. That hymn proceeds, My chains fell off, my heart was free, I rose, went forth, and followed thee. As it can be. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword, and I shall conquer a bee. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within thine arms, and strong shall be my hand.